Hey, it's Andrew Brown, and welcome back as we are taking a look at the exam guide uh, for the HashiCorp Terraform Associate Certification. I want to tell you, uh, throughout this course, I'm going to show you where I get things. Uh, so I will be going to Google. I will be typing in where things are. It's not because I don't know where things are. I'm doing that for your benefit so that you build up the skill to know how to find things just the way that I would go find things. And I'll be very transparent about that. So for this one, all I did was go into Google and type in uh, Terraform uh, exam guide. And so I found it here. This is also the place where you can uh, register for the exam. So if you click this, it should load up uh, certain metrics. It'll make a pop-up. You have to authenticate it. I'm not showing that here right now, but when you are ready to register for the exam, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, you'll notice they also have this uh, button here called prepare for the exam. They have their own study guide here. It's very text-based heavy. I do believe that somewhere in here, there is a way to um, launch tutorials uh, and this will launch uh, sandbox environments. I think through Instruct, at least the last time I checked. Um, those are great if uh, you don't have an environment set up. What I wanna do with you is I, wa I want you to set everything up in your own environment. Uh, because I want you to have those real world skills. So you can use this stuff uh, adjacent to this course. I've gone through all this material here. I'm trying to cover things that aren't in here and try to make sure that we are doing things without guardrails, without um, the bullying bumpers, because I want you to get that real world experience, okay? But I do want to point out that this is here and you can use it um, and uh, it's okay. So let's scroll down and take a look um, at our exam guide here. And so here they say we have some prerequisites. So they say basic terminal skills. That makes sense. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff uh, in terminal. Basic understanding of on-premise and cloud architecture. Uh, I think what they really mean is, do you know how to use AWS? Do you know how to use Azure GCP? What is your major uh, cloud provider or, or stuff like that? Um, now I keep talking or focusing on AWS Azure GCP, uh, but understand that Terraform can be used uh, for anything, as long as there is a, a provider for it, it can provision on almost anything, okay? And that's why they're being uh, very generic in their description. Um, this says the product version tested is Terraform 1.0 and higher. Uh, so it shows you that this is still, even though it's the 003, it's still really the 002 exam with some minor tweaks. Um, but just understand in this course, we're gonna go well beyond this because I'm just future-proofing you and making sure you have real world skills. Let's scroll on down here um, and let's just read this about renewing your certification. So if you hold an unexpired Terraform Associate 002 certification, uh, you can take the new one starting 18 months after your previous exam. If you hold an unexpired one, you can take the new exam starting 18 months after your previous exam. Uh, if you hold an expired one, you're eligible to, to recertify at any time. I really like this because what happens for me with certifications, not a problem for you, but a problem for me is that I will sit a certification and then nine months later, the new one comes out and I can't sit the new one and tell you about it. Uh, so it looks like we've gotten a bit of flexibility there. And again, I'm on video here. I will get out of the way. Um, it's just that we're in the uh, these earlier videos and I wanna just hang out here with you, okay? Uh, going down below, we can confirm it's the one hour duration. This is $70. It might vary based on your location and other stuff. You, uh, I just don't want to tell you that $70. I want you to go through the process and find out yourself, but that's probably what it's going to cost you. Um, there is no free retake included. Um, some certifications like CompTIA, you are basic, or uh, the Kubernetes ones from Linux Foundation, you basically get a retake. So you're basically paying a uh, uh, for two and they call it a free retake, which it really isn't free, but... Uh, uh, I think this is okay. Um, I think it's fine that there's no retake. It's in English, expires in two years. We covered that before. Let's take a look at the exam objectives. So the first one is understand infrastructure as a code and concepts. They used to have a bunch of junk in here. Um, and honestly, I didn't even know what they were talking about when they said that. I remember I had to comb through uh, the, the study guide and, and try to watch uh, articles and stuff like that. But I think they realized that it was junk. Uh, that they were trying to uh, impart too much uh, conceptual stuff and they cut back this one here. Same thing with two. It doesn't show us the comparison of the old one. At, at some point on this website, they showed the comparative between 002 and 003. But all I'm saying is that they cut back here. I have a bit more content on this in the course. It's not gonna hurt you to watch it. It's just gonna help you understand it, but you're not gonna be tested 100% on this stuff. The other thing I wanna note is that for each point that is here, 
each subdomain or, or point, or whatever you want to call it, they're going to ask you a question on. This is very different uh, way of designing uh, an exam. Uh, other exams like AWS, they will, they will list a bunch of stuff, but they say it might not be on the exam or it might have stuff that are that's outside of it. So you just have to broadly study and uh, you will over, over, over study uh, for the content because you just don't know what you're going to get, uh, get on the exam. For HashiCorp, exams, they're very fair. If you know each of these points, you can expect to see them generally on the exam. And that's how you're going to uh, know that you are ready if you if you know all these things. In this course, we're going to go beyond that because again, I want you to have those real world skills, but just feel confidence in knowing every single point here. Uh, going down here, understand Terraform basics, install uh, uh, and version Terraform providers. So that is what we will be doing a lot of in this because uh, we're going to at least touch uh, more than one provider. Um, in this course, I'm not going to go in great detail on uh, the cloud infrastructure part of it because you're already supposed to know it. Um, and I'm going to leave that for other things, doing future projects for specific, uh, for, for specific cloud providers. Uh, we're focused here on Terraform in this course, not the underlying uh, providers, but we do use multiple ones here. Uh, describe plugin-based architecture, write Terraform configuration using multiple providers, describe how Terraform finds and fetches providers. So uh, you can see there is a, a lot of stuff about providers, not to be confused with provisioners. I said earlier that provisioners is no longer covered in this uh, certification course, but again, the material's here so that you can learn it uh, for real world practice. Uh, use Terraform outside of core, uh, of core workflows. I think this used to be like use Terraform CLI outside of core workflows, so they made a, a small tweak there. So it says describe when to use Terraform import to import existing infrastructure into your Terraform state. Terraform import is super, super powerful. Uh, going over to other providers, uh, you know, for a long time, AWS did not have an import option. Um, so the, the idea is that uh, by having this import, we can uh, bring an in infrastructure that was not necessarily there before. Uh, we have Terraform state to view our Terraform state, something that you're gonna find uh, unique to Terraform is state management. It's something that's super important uh, and it's probably the hardest concept in Terraform uh, because when you use something like CloudFormation or Azure Bicep, uh, the state is managed by uh, uh, services on those providers. Um, there isn't a managed service, uh, pr uh, a managed service on those providers. And so you have to uh, decide where you want to put your state. Uh, and one example would be Terraform Cloud and that's one that we do use in this uh, in this course here. Describe when to enable verbose logging and what the outcome is. So you have to know how to debug things here, which is great. Uh, interact with Terraform modules. So contrast and use different module source options, including public Terraform module registry. Interact with modules, inputs, and outputs. Describe variable scope and module child modules. Set module versions. Modules is a way of creating reusable code. Uh, we are going to uh, use uh, public libraries as well as uh, make our own modules. Making modules is not as hard as you uh, would imagine, uh, but they can get very complex. Uh, so, you know, we're not going to go super advanced into modules, but we are going to make sure we can write our own and, and use public ones. Use the Terraform, uh, use the Terraform workflow. So uh, this is something we're going to have to know a lot about, which is just uh, the general lifecycle workflow of working with infrastructure as code. So we have init, validate, plan, apply, destroy, format. Plan and apply are the ones we're gonna be using a lot of. There is a lot of trickery with the init, so that's something else that we'll do there as well. Uh, implement and maintain state. So maintaining state, working with state, super, super important. Um, so we'll look at how it works with local state, uh, state locking, handling backend cloud integrations, authentication methods. Uh, you know, they're talking about managed providers like Terraform Cloud. Uh, the difference between remote state backend options, managed resource drift and Terraform state. Terraform is super good at, at drift and fixing drift. Uh, it's so good at, at remediation uh, compared to other um, uh, IEC tools. And that's why it is such a popular uh, tool to use. Uh, describe backend block and cloud integration and configuration. Understand secret management and state files. Then we have regenerate, modify configuration. So demonstrate uh, the use of variable variables and outputs. Describe secure secret injection best practices. Understand the use of collection and structural types. Create and differentiate resource and data configuration. Use resource addressing and resource parameters to connect resources together. Use HCL and Terraform functions to write configuration. 
describe built-in dependency management. And the last one here is understand Terraform Cloud capabilities. So explain how Terraform Clouds helps to manage infrastructure. Describe how Terraform Cloud enables collaboration government governance. Uh, I'm going to just tell you right now, we're going to probably do more Terraform Cloud than we uh, we need to. It's just because when I made this course the first time, I, I just lightly did Terraform Cloud, just enough to pass the exam. I have the time to do a little bit more there. and I would like to do that uh, for your own benefit. Uh, and so we will expand on that a bit more. But you can see this is mostly about Terraform the technology, uh, not necessarily Terraform Cloud, the uh, the service. If you're confused about Terraform and Terraform Cloud, uh, uh, again, we'll explain that in this course and make sure it's very clear what the difference is. Um, one other thing I wanted to notice is that you do have some sample questions here. So you can go through here and you can just see that uh, the questions are uh, very straightforward uh, and they're just like this. They're very simple, uh, but you know, you do have to know you do have to know what you're looking at and see like here they're showing code. So you can see you have to choose um, code and you might get a code block. So it is very focused on the practical component of it. Uh, it's less about the conceptual okay. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully uh, that gives you an idea of what we're getting into and we'll see you in the next one, okay? Ciao.